If you're not a guy who thinks that you cannot get to the end zone any way possible, then you need not be a kick returner. He is electrifying. Top 10? Got to be in the top five. Oh, oh my God! God! Unbelievable! He was the best return man ever. I mean, there was just nobody better. No question that returning a punt has got to be the toughest thing you can do on football field. The art of the return. There are few plays in football more exciting than a long touchdown return. He go all the, way. the men that do it all have certain traits. You have to be fearless, number one. You have a guy running at you at 500 miles an hour, and his goal is to kill you. You gotta be crazy. Most guys will tell you, looking up in the air, with somebody coming down to hit me, I don't want to do that job. You know there's going to be times where you're just going to get smoked. You stop him, you stop him, you stop him, you stop him, and then all of a sudden you don't stop him so much. You have to have moves. You've got to be able to fake people out. He's got some shake and bake, doesn't he? And then a great ability to make an unblocked first defender down miss. One man missed him, another man missed him. And then you've got to have speed. You've got to break away. Bye-bye, baby, bye-bye. So what separates the best from the rest? He's got to have no brains first. You got to have gut second, and then you got to have that quick first step to say, I'm not going to let that guy hit me. Here are the top 10 return aces of all time. The number 10 return ace of all time, Dante Hall. Wow, uh, where can I start with Dante Hall? He's the best I've ever been around. When Dante Hall got ready to catch the ball, people got out. All right, Dante! Return ball! He electrified the crowd. Dante Hall at the 40, at the 45, cuts it back, go. and he's got room. Here he goes! Come on, Dante, come on, Dante! Just a punter to beat as he sprints it. 10, 5, touchdown! Hey, Dante Hall, he got me. He got me. He's just like a little net. You need a little flash water to try to catch him. Looked like he'd be in a box of four guys, and he'd somehow come out of that. Hall is piled on. Now he gets away on second effort. Dante Hall still on his feet and still not down. Dante Hall with one of the most incredible moves you will ever see. How did he do that? And next thing you know, he's in the end zone. Dante Hall, the human joystick, they call him. Someone said it's like playing an Atari game with <laughs> a joystick. The human joystick with the touchdown! I thought that was a great nickname because that's what he was. Here you are with the greatest athletes in the world and you're making them look silly. Dante Hall's going to do it again! I think Dante Hall had one of the greatest returns in history. I just remember the, the pinball return versus the Broncos. He catches it inside the 10-yard line. Makes the first man miss, looking to try to get to the outside. And then he actually starts running backwards. It seemed like every Bronco had at least three chances at him. He's in trouble. He's surrounded. Now he gets to the left side. He's got nobody but the kicker in front of him. He winds up taking it all the way for a touchdown that wins the game. Touchdown on an unbelievable kick return. It was one of those where you, you just can't believe you just saw that. That's why he's the best. That's why he's the best right now. Paul's 12 return touchdowns are second most in league history, thanks in large part to one huge season. Dante Hall had, in 2003, one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen from a return man. Our number 10 ace earned a Pro Bowl spot after returning four kicks for touchdowns in four straight weeks. He's going to outrun the entire Ravens defense. Touchdown! He was actually considered early in the season for NFL MVP. We assumed it was going to last six, seven, eight years. As it turned out, it didn't last very long at all. He had two really good years. For most of the time, other than that, he was basically an average return man. Tante Hall, yeah. What happened to that guy? He's still in the league, and I didn't even know that the last couple of years. I didn't even know he was still in the league. Dante has to make a man miss, makes a move, 20. 
for a while there, he was the scariest player in the NFL. Dante Hall, 86 yard touchdown. And then sort of went away. But when he was great, he was the best. The record for the shortest punt return touchdown in NFL history came in the 1985 playoffs when the Bears' Sean Gale scored on this all-time NFL folly. Most postseason returns aren't that easy. Tennessee has pulled a miracle! In the last half century, there have only been 35 postseason return touchdowns. Ball command of the 30, breaks it to the near side, 25, watch out! That's the mark of a great player. When given the opportunity, he steps up and performs. Daryl Green returns the punt 50 yards. A great return guy can single-handedly change the momentum of a game. But surprisingly, most big game returns have been delivered by anonymous return men. Names like Fulton Walker and Stanford Jennings may ring a bell, but only for their one shining moment. In Super Bowl 35, Ron Dixon of the Giants and Jermaine Lewis of the Ravens had back-to-back -back kickoff returns for touchdowns. Yeah! Yeah! becoming just the second and third players ever with multiple postseason return TDs. The first is next on our list. The number nine return ace of all time, Desmond Howard. We may have gone. Desmond Howard's one of the rare guys who, at the position he entered the league at, wide receiver, one of the top overall picks in 1992, he was a complete and total bust. When Desmond Howard was returning kicks, he was in his element. That's what he liked to do. That's what he excelled at. But once you put him in an offense, he was a different player. As a receiver, not much. But as a return guy, he was electric. There it is. to Desmond Howard. Uh-oh, watch out. There was so much expectation placed on him because of what he did at Michigan that he never really lived up to it. He was an unbelievable weapon in Michigan. His signature play was in the Ohio State game. There's no game more important in this area than Michigan-Ohio State. It was so delicious seeing that because how could anyone strike that pose in that situation right there? He endeared himself in the hearts of Michigan fans forever. After taking home the Heisman in 1991, our number nine return ace had three largely unsuccessful seasons in Washington and a year in exile with the expansion Jaguars. But then it all came together for the biggest of our big game returners. Desmond Howard probably had the best punt return season of all time in 1996. That year, Howard set the single season record for punt return yards and returned to his home away from home to light up the Lions. I remember 50, 40, 30 and the roar started to grow and all of a sudden I looked around and I said wow there's a lot of Packer fans here today and it was Desmond who brought him out. Decided to try to give them a little treat and I dusted off the Heisman pose. Desmond Howard is at it again. When you have a guy like Desmond Howard it's such a threat there's no doubt that without him we would have not gotten to the Super Bowl. To the 40 on his feet to the 45 outside midfield to the 45 to the 40 he may go. The score on your first punt return in a playoff game at Lambeau Field. It doesn't get any better than that for me. A bold statement, considering just two games later, his 51 steps to glory helped the Packers win Super Bowl 31. They say big players make big plays in big games, and Desmond Howard sealed the MVP trophy with that return. That places him in my book in the Return Man Hall of Fame. Through a hole to the 20, to the 30, outside, to the 40. He may be gone. It was just make a move on Vinatieri and then get to the robot. Touchdown for Desmond Howard! The biggest thing I remember about Desmond is the robot <laughs> in the Super Bowl. I mean, it was just kind of awkward, kind of funny. Is there a Super Bowl MVP pose? Have you made one up? Howard is the only return man to ever earn Super Bowl MVP honors. And three years later, he had one more big game return back where it all started against the team that drafted him. The Lions lose their return man with a broken hand on like a Friday night. They get Desmond Howard signed on Saturday and darn if he doesn't return a punt for a touchdown against the Redskins. He's gone! He's gone! Touchdown, Desmond Howard! Is that unbelievable? I think Desmond had a very, very, very worthwhile career. He was one of the best return men of his era and he was a Super Bowl MVP. I'll take that. Okay, I'll take that any day of the week. Number eight return. Josh Riggs. 
I'm a baseball player. I, I know the world doesn't know, but I originally, you know, when that was my hot playing baseball. Josh Cribbs no longer plays baseball, but he is still a home run threat. Cribbs has got a crack at it. Where's he going? That's the Josh Cribbs show to perfection. He's gone! understand he was a street free agent out of Kent State he was a quarterback now wasn't going to get a chance at quarterback so he said okay how can I make an NFL team well special teams my goal was to make it in NFL doing anything possible no matter what it took Cribs used his quarterback experience to make his mark as a kick returner he just sees the field in a way that I think a lot of other people don't. Cleveland, that's where it's at. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A lot of it has to do with his vision and the way he sees the field, the way he sees things on kickoff return. He sees the hole, and he can hit it, break tackles, and keep going. The thing that makes Josh Cribbs so exciting is the fact that he's almost like a linebacker running down there. I mean, when he's returning a kick, I mean, you better watch out because you're going to get the forearm shiver. You're going to get run over. His legs never stop moving. When you hit him, you got to keep your legs moving. He's like a defender running down there. He's like a running back. He's like a receiver. He's all kinds of things rolled into one. Our number eight return ace is all kinds of things. Cribs doesn't just return kicks, he covers them. Usually the big time returners don't do anything on a, from a coverage perspective, but he can go out and play gunner and you have to deal with him as a gunner. Josh Cribs is taking out his own competition for top 10 return men. And that's why I love Josh Cribs, okay? He has that winner's mindset, that desire to win and do whatever it takes. I want to see that one fifth. Say, oh Lord, I repent for anything. There is always the feeling that he's going to take this back. Cribb's resume building moment came in December of 2009 when he returned two kicks the length of the field in the first half alone. He's to the 40. He's out running the Chiefs. To have two 100 yards or more in the same game. I mean, they know he's coming, and yet they still can't stop him. One. Yards for Cribs. Everyone believes they can stop him, and you know, he just says, I dare you. I dare you to kick it to me. The eighth kickoff return of his career for a touchdown. Move over NFL record books. Here comes Josh Cribs. That's Josh Cribs. And sometimes you want to come off the bench and try to tackle him yourself, but I'd probably miss too. Joy and I love telling people I wasn't drafted. They're like, "What round you go? Second, third, first round?" I'm like, mm -mm. try no round. You know, I would have loved to hear my name on draft day, but I'm so glad it wasn't because I still have a chip on my shoulder. One of the biggest problems with the term return ace is that most people only think of return specialist. In fact, there are many players we considered for our list whose primary job was something else. Coaches will spend an entire week at a blackboard trying to draw up a way to get him the ball in space where he can kind of create and make a big play. That happens organically on a kick return. Red G, red G, red G. They're like pinch hitters. You bring them in the bottom of the ninth to hit one out, and those guys do. Absolutely the best of that. Come returns and kick off you Absolutely the best. In the old days, there was no such thing as a return ace. Back then, the rosters were so small, they had to use their frontline players to return kicks. In the 1950s and 60s, Ollie Matson and Travis Williams were prime examples of running backs who were also returners, but they couldn't beat out another running back as the best of that era. <laughs> the number seven return ace of all time, Dale Sayers. Here we go again. I can't believe you didn't give Gale Sayers more respect than that. <laughs> How can Gale Sayers be number seven? Um, um. I can't believe he's number seven. There's something wrong with that list. Gale Sayers may have been the best kick returner in the history of the National Football League. If you look at the numbers, 
Gale Sayers averaged, I think, about 31 yards of return. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Here he is, galloping Gale, carrying the mail. 1967 was the season for him. He only returned a couple of punts, but he averaged 26.7 yards of punt return. He averaged 37.6 yards per kickoff return and returned three of them for touchdowns. That was probably the greatest returning season anybody ever had. Give me 18 years of daylight. That's all I need. I remember sitting in front of a TV set as a kid watching Gale Sayers, and I never saw anything like it. That guy was unbelievable. He could turn a game anytime he wanted with a return. Gale Sayers, one block, you get in the way, I do something, he's gone. He was returning kicks and punts while he was carrying the ball. I could have ran the ball 15 times. You know, then all of a sudden, I, I got to run back a punt return. He was just a football player. That's my definition of him. It's a backyard football. He does whatever it takes to get in the end zone. I remember watching one of his kick returns, and he was coming up the middle, and the guy was coming to tackle him from the left side, and he just stopped. And the guy went by, and I'm like, how did he see that guy? I had great peripheral vision. When I looked at the field, I could see everybody on the field. So I wasn't concerned about, oh, he's coming over here, he'll knock me down, or somebody here. I, I could see these players. The ability to change directions, just be here, move here, and be gone, he has to be your number one guy. So why again is he only number seven? He suffers from having been a great running back. He's a Hall of Fame running back, so we don't always categorize him as a return man. If you'd made him just a return man, but without question would have been the best ever. Okay, is that it? You know, he didn't play that long. True, Sayers only had 118 returns in his career. My career was short, okay? But I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I played the game, I enjoyed it, I loved it, and uh, the things that I did on the football field speaks for themselves. If you're looking at one kick return with your life on the line, who are you gonna send back to catch the ball? I'm sending Gail Sayers back. The number six return ace of all time, Rick Upshur. Um, no. <laughs> Even though he may not pass the Sayers test, Rick Upshur exploded onto the scene in the mid-1970s by tying the record for the most punt return touchdowns in a season with four in just his second year. Good returners don't run east and west, they run north and south, and Rick was one of those guys. Rick Upchurch was unbelievable. Week in and week out, he's worth the ticket price. I just remember, like, liking his name, watching him play. I think Rick Upchurch had a real knack to get in the open and had the speed to do it. If you had your druthers, you wouldn't kick the ball to Rick. <laughs> You'd kick it away from him. The good coverage teams, that's what they do. They don't kick to him and see how good they are. They kick away from him and see if he can still handle it. Upchurch spent much of the middle part of his career primarily as a wide receiver. But in 1982, under new head coach Dan Reeves, our number six return ace took two more punts back to the house, which at the time tied him for the most return TDs in league history. Rick was so explosive. You got one chance to tackle this guy. If you don't get him, he's off to the races. He was one of those guys that had the courage to make those tough catches. A lot of guys go out there and they want fair catch. Rick Upchurch would take a lot of chances, you know, to catch the football because he knew if he got it in his hands, he had a chance to go to distance. I just didn't fear anyone as far as the football field was concerned. Our number six return ace also held a special place in the hearts of his team's biggest rival. Rick Upchurch was so slippery, so fast, and also had a big mouth, and he would drive you crazy. He would be right in your face. I'll never forget one time, we're, we're playing the Broncos, huge game. And I forget it was Tatum or Hackers, somebody just took him and dr drilled him in. And it was such a blatant 15-yard penalty. I don't believe it! What was he thinking? He couldn't stand him anymore. So Upchurch won the battle, you know, he won it with his mouth. Because of the altitude, some people swore when Upchurch was returning kicks, he was toying with them like a cat and a mouse just to watch them run out of gas at Mile High Stadium. But that wasn't the only advantage the Mile High Air gave him. I almost have to dock some points from Rick Upchurch because he played in Denver, where the air is a little bit thinner. I think it's a little easier to catch punch when you have hang time. And we got a guy named Ray Guy. 
that just loved to kick the ball a million miles. So Rick would have, you know, maybe 15 yards to work with. We're usually at about five. That's a subtlety of the return game, but I dock a point or two from Rick Upchurch just because he played in Denver. Keep going, baby! Don't run out of gas! I'm sure that helped a little bit, but I think Upchurch, with his talent and his speed, could make that work in almost any NFL stadium. This guy is just simply amazing. He was clearly ahead of the game in terms of when he was playing and for years afterwards, he was still somebody that uh, you would look to as a prototype. And now, the number five return ace of all time, Mel Gray. I would have to say Mel Gray should be a little higher than that. Is there any better in the National Football League? I think he's one of the more underrated guys. Mel Gray! I think it's a wise choice because I don't think a lot of people would recognize him today as one of the top 10 return guys. Gray began his career in 1986 with the Saints, but it was primarily as a member of the Lions where our number five return ace showed off his number one trait. His thing was speed. Oh, he was quick. Got his third kickoff return for a touchdown this year. Coaches were screaming. Everybody hustled to the ball. Everybody get to him. We need 11 guys to tackle him. Bell up to the races far side. He's gone. And you would all come walking over to the sideline saying, what happened? We prepared for this guy, but we just couldn't stop him from getting to the end zone. That will just break your back. But as the old adage goes, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. He took some huge hits. That's as hard a hit as you're ever going to see. Wayne Fonts used to joke that he would go into the pile so fast that sometimes he'd get knocked back out even faster. Watching Mel Gray made me realize that the greatest attribute a kick returner can have, and he had it, was fearlessness. Where you collect the ball, you just pick a hole, and you go. And if you get hit, you get hit hard and you are down. But if you burst through that hole, you're gone. He's off to the races. Touchdown, Mel Gray. 98 yards. The amazing thing about Mel Gray was he never lost that fearlessness. Nobody's going to catch him. Mel Gray's going all the way for the touchdown. In his 12 seasons, Gray scored nine touchdowns and retired in 1997 as the league's all-time leading kick returner. A lot of returners in this league do it for a year or two. It's the special ones like Mel Gray who do it year after year after year. That is really hard to do. kickoff return by Mel Gray. He made four Pro Bowls here in Detroit in a six-year span. And I once asked one of the guys who was a Hall of Fame selector, could a return specialist, who's clearly the best of his era, and Mel Gray was, could he make the Hall of Fame? And the guy said, I'd vote for him. Well, he's never come up and he never will, but he was that good for that period of time. The number four return ace of all time, Deion Sanders. You think kick returner, you think Deion Sanders. It's almost like Deion Sanders invented that position. Deion showcased his invention in his very first NFL game. One man missed him, another man missed him. Now he's going wide off to the right. Deion to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. My God, Deion Sanders is going to score. His threat in the kicking game was just enormous. There was just something about Deion Sanders waiting to receive the kick. Deion Sanders back deep for the Falcons. It created a level of anticipation. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It was almost palpable. He was one of these guys where everybody got on the edge of the seat. You kind of expected him always to do something kind of brilliant. Sanders to the 25, Sanders to the 10. He did it again. Deion Sanders in his prime was a very legitimate threat to score every time he touched the ball. He was exceptionally athletic. Man, man, what an athlete. And by the way, faster than all the really fast guys in the league. He's going, baby! Yes, and bye bye! Touchdown, Deion Sanders! It's on the day, baby. And I'm going to get sick with it. Deion Sanders brought not only tremendous talent to the return position, he brought an awful lot of sizzle. I don't know that I've ever seen a more confident football player on the field. I mean, man, he, he had more confidence in himself. He told you he was going to return a punt for a touchdown. Can I get a couple punts? Let's go. What's that? Can I get a couple punts? And that's exactly what he did. Deion Sanders, touchdown! 
prime time does it again. And I think he's one of the first NFL players to be that bold and that brash and still deliver. Supreme arrogance. I'm Deion Sanders. I'm great. You didn't catch me. Too bad for you. Touchdown me. You only have to look at your watch to see what time it is. <laughs> when the camera was on, it was prime time. Come on, baby, with your sweet show, baby. It was time for him to put on a show. You wanted to see that moment where he broke out free and he high-stepped his way into the end zone. Sanders going down the sideline, dancing for a long, long touchdown. High-stepping toward the end zone with his hand behind his, his head. That's Deion Sanders, and you know that's Deion Sanders because to this day, you have all these people trying to imitate what Deion Sanders did. Surely seeing him on the field was the best, but seeing him in the end zone was almost as fun. And the Deion shuffle follows in the end zone. You'll find this piece of tape. He returned a punt against Buffalo one year. He's high stepping. He throws into the end zone. At the end of the return, you'll see one of the Buffalo guys go up to him and actually pat him on the behind, as if to say, hey, you just kicked our butt, but that was nice. Probably the only thing that might keep Deion Sanders from being the top return man of all time is all the other things he had to do on the field. Play defense. Deion Sanders has an interception. Even play wide receiver for one season. Last one to the end zone to Deion Sanders. Caught. Touchdown, Dallas. Most guys who are doing what he did wanted to get off the field and take a blow. I love that Dion wanted to stay on the field. I think he's number one, and everybody else is tied for number ten. Dion is a top three guy to me. I, I probably wouldn't put him up that high. Not high enough. Oh, he'll be mad. He'll he'll think he should be number one. He's the best. He's the best. Not all return aces can light it up year after year, but that doesn't mean one season wonders can't get some love on our show. Most return guys have a peak. They're sort of like comets. They burn hot for a while, but they burn out pretty quick. No one burned brighter than Michael Lewis in 2002 when he racked up over 2,400 return yards and three touchdowns, two of them in one game. Nobody can catch Michael Lewis. He's gone. He's got the daily double. Eddie Drummond was a rare bright spot for the Lions in 2004, earning a Pro Bowl berth with four return touchdowns. He's got it. Eddie Drummond takes it back. And in 2000, Marte Jenkins set an NFL record with 2,186 kick return yards, more than he had the rest of his career combined. He's going. He's going. He scores. For these returners, success was gone in a flash. But the next guy on our list was just plain flashy. The number three return ace of all time, Billy White Shoes Johnson. Billy White Shoes Johnson, he was the first of the great return men in the NFL. You want us to go after it, you want to return. 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 Billy Johnson will feel this one. He was the first returner that developed a strong identity. Billy White Shoes. White Shoes. White Shoes? A little fella they called Billy White Shoes. You have to have a nickname. I mean, that adds to it. He was wearing the low-cut white shoes, which he probably painted himself because I don't even think they were selling white shoes in stores. It perked your attention because you'd never seen that before. It was something that was fresh. It was something new. Nobody had seen anything like him. Billy Johnson, here he goes again. Billy Johnson across midfield. He's still on his feet. Nobody knew who Billy was, but it didn't take him long because he was an instant hit. An electrifying return by Billy White Shoes Johnson. He was a little small guy. He was about 5'9". You couldn't catch him. Little number 84, Billy Johnson, a slippery escape artist who can turn a simple punt return into a geometry lesson. Best way to describe it is trying to catch a hummingbird or maybe a lightning bug because Billy was everywhere. Whenever I get the ball, I don't know where I'm going or what I'm going to do. I know I'm supposed to go. I don't think half the time the guys blocking for him, they knew where he was going. He didn't just get the ball and go. He'd move, he'd reverse his field, he'd come back. If he goes to the right, don't chase him, because he'll be coming back. <laughs> Johnson at the 30, 20, touchdown, Billy Johnson. Somebody said he could stop on a dime and he could leave you change. He had that juke, if you will, that he, the first guy missed, and then he was off to the races. You were just chasing his shadows. Johnson off to the races down the sideline. He's still on his feet. 
when he'd get his hands on the ball on the punt, everybody stand up. He never hesitated. On his first step, he's going full speed. Billy White Shoes was uh, more of a showman. I remember Billy White Shoes as one of the first guys that kind of celebrated after he scored. Touchdown, Billy Johnson! All of a sudden, you started to see a little bit of entertainment value coming to the NFL. Billy White Shoes Johnson, the funky chicken. The funky chicken. The funky chicken. Oh, no, not the funky chicken. The greatest celebratory dance in the history of the NFL, without a doubt. Call him what you will. This Michael Jackson in cleats. Gene Kelly in cleats. You just wanted to see him do the dance. I love him doing his little thing with his legs going in and out. Where his legs would do this, and he'd do the splits. And then he did the splits. He came down to the ball, and then he lifted up and he brought it back and flipped it behind his back. Well, I would say right here, you've got to go to Billy White's shoes and let him do a little dance. Unbelievable showmanship. To me, still the best. Fans loved him. His teammates loved him. Opponents hated him because of the funky chicken. People remember the dance, but he was a really good football player. In my mind, Billy White Shoes Johnson is the greatest return man ever. He should be number one. In fact, this, this list is a sham if he's number three. He should be number one. Since we capped our list at 10 return aces, a few guys with strong resumes were left on the outside looking in. Like Dave Meggett, who had over 9,000 return yards and ran back eight touchdowns. Are you shocked that Meggett's not on our list? I'm, I'm very shocked. You know, I played with him in Tecmo Bowl. He returned every time I played with him on Nintendo. <laughs> Vi Sikahema was a knockout returner in Philadelphia with 8,000 yards and four touchdowns. Touchdown, Vi I work with Vi Sikahema with all due respect. We remember him because he punched the goalpost. And guys like Glenn Milburn and Alan Rossum have combined for more than 25,000 yards. That's 14 miles of returns. Alan Rossum is a perfect example of a longevity player. He did it for a lot of years, and therefore he compiled numbers. And the poster boy for return longevity? He's next on our countdown. The number two return ace of all time, Brian Mitchell. What's interesting about Brian Mitchell is that he never returned a kick till he got to the National Football League. And that's what I plan on doing, returning everything. He taught himself how to become a kick returner. The first time he stepped on an NFL field, our number two return ace proved to be a quick study. Rookie Brian Mitchell was trying, of course, to impress the Redskins coaches and earn a spot on that squad. The first time I returned a kick in the league, I returned a touchdown in a, in a preseason game. And a good hole! It would be the last time anyone messed up Brian Mitchell's name. When you take the opening kickoff back in the first preseason game, all the coaches sit up and go, hey, we got to watch that guy. Well, that's what you call making an early statement there, Chuck. I guess the temptation is when that happens, probably the people that saw it and thought, well, beginner's luck. Oh, really? Touchdown! 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 Brian Mitchell! Brian! He not only became good at it, there are some people that would say he became the best at it. Brian Mitchell was the standard, really, for kick returners and punt returners because he wasn't a guy who would dance. He'd get it and go straight forward. Brian Mitchell breaks through. Mitchell made that happen by running through traffic on three different occasions and making the play. A lot of guys were smaller than I was, and they were those shifty guys. If they had 10,000 yards, they might have ran 15 because they did too much other stuff. I went straight ahead. Mitchell will get a chance to return it this time. Brian Mitchell is going coast to coast for a touchdown. I think if you constantly get the job done, it doesn't make a difference how you get there. I just got the job done, you know? <laughs> Missed to get the job done. It got to be scratching and biting and fighting, baby, and I'm willing to do all three of them. The best part about Brian Mitchell is when you saw him, he didn't have the greatest body in the world. You looked at him in the locker room and said, this guy's like the greatest return man in NFL history. He had huge arms, thick chest, big legs. Brian Mitchell, is he something? He was a fullback returning punts when everybody else was a receiver or a slot back. You know, most of those guys are with 165 to about 190. 
And I played at 215 to 225. Spurt to the 40, cut back, he's gone. He was a muscular guy, and when he hit you, it hurt. If you tried to arm tackle Brian Mitchell in the middle of the field, he would rip your arm off. Oh, what a great play! He wasn't going to try and juke you. He wasn't going to try and outrun you. He was going to run through you. And once again, bravo, Brian Mitchell. I've never seen a return man who loved contact as much as he did. You give him your best shot, and he get up and say, that's all you got? I like a fight. A legal one. Mitchell was great because he sustained it over his entire career. You have to show that you can do it at a high level on a consistent basis. That's why I think Brian Mitchell deserves a high spot on the list. Hey, you're a hell of a player, man. Hey, man. He may not have had those amazing seasons like Dante Hall, but he kept being one of the top return men in the league year after year after year. Touchdown with a swap dive into the end zone. Let me jump, baby. Let me jump. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, he retired with more combined return yardage than any player in football history. If he's not number one, no one is. Who's number one? And now, the number one return ace of all time, Devin Hester. The Windy City Flyer, the man they call any time. Devin Hester is going to return it. First to the 25-30, opening 35-40. Devin Hester is great. Yeah, he's one of the best at it. As a matter of fact, his numbers in his first year and a half of trying it were unprecedented. But to say he's the best of all time, I think is nuts. You can't win for nothing, man. Devin is the hot thing now. Well, the hot thing two years ago. Last year, he didn't do much. He has been susceptible to the same problems as every other great kick returner. It didn't last. He lost his job as a kick returner halfway through 2008. He's not a game changer as a return man anymore. So I think the jury's still out on whether or not Devin Hester is the best ever. I think the jury's still out on whether or not he's even on this list. So I guess we're going to have to work for this one. Time to get out of this hole, man. Huh? Let's turn to some of Devin's supporters for some help. Devin Hester is the best ever to play at the position. Devin Hester is in a different category. He's unbelievable. You don't find guys like him. You can't find guys like him. What he did in his first three years in the league, no one's ever done it, so you have to put that guy at the top of the list. You have to. To put what our number one return ace has achieved in his short career into perspective, consider that in the 85 seasons in NFL history before Devin Hester came into the league, not one player ever had more than four combined kick and punt return touchdowns in a season. Hester has done it twice. I've just never seen a guy like Devin Hester do it as many times. And just, how does this guy, how does he get another, how did he get another touchdown? Devin Hester done it again! You know what, he's genius. He is genius because he kind of just fakes. No, nah, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. And he's gone. I remember the play where it was a missed field goal. And he just kind of plays possum there. And all of a sudden he starts running out. And now Devin Hester going to run it out. And it was like, what's going on here? No chance. Goodbye. Touchdown. The Windy City Flyer. Unfortunately, I saw Devin Hester do it twice in a game. He can go 80 to 90 at any time. Devin Hester. Hester starts at the 10, veering right now, angling to the middle at the 20. Hits the gas, 25-30, 35-40. Long gone. That makes me want to throw up, literally. He changes games, ladies and gentlemen. He changes games. Are you kidding me? I, I don't you know the guy something. In the second return in St. Louis, I came up with the term that Devin Hester, you are ridiculous. This guy's ridiculous. Hello, notice to the NFL. <laughs> if he hadn't already officially served notice, our number one return ace did so with one of the most memorable moments in Super Bowl history. It's rare that something you talk about and dissect and analyze really comes to pass in the course of the game, much less on the opening kickoff. Flat balls popping here in Miami. Hester under it and to the middle of the 15, to the 20, breaks free, the 25, to the 30, to the outside. Everyone was expecting him to do it, and he did it. That never happens. Hester five. Oh, touchdown, Bears! No way! 
I think everybody's reaction was, oh my God. Devin Hester, you are ridiculous. The legacy of Devin Hester is still being written, but if he has anything to say about it, there will never be any doubt who's number one. You know, I want to put a number out there that's twice as much as the guy that's behind me. I know that records are meant to be broken, but this one, I want to try to put it out there as far as I can. Devin Hester is running to the NFL record book. Has he been doing it long? No, he hasn't. Is it fair to put him ahead of all these other guys that had great careers as return guys? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. There he goes! Devin Hester keep making history! So that's how this top ten list shakes out. Love it. Finally, you guys did a good job with the list. Or hate it. Who comes up with these lists? I say, well, upstairs, make this list. I gotta go tackle him. One thing's for sure. The debate over number one has only just begun. That's why he's the best. He's the best. Deion Sanders is definitely number one on my list. In my mind, Billy White Hughes Johnson is the greatest return man ever. If Brian Mitchell is not number one, no one is. Look at the record books. I am number one. Well, they, um, it has to be me. In the end, there may only be one good way to settle it. Oh,